it's me, Nicolette Mashile, and today I want to talk a little bit about birthdays, right? So, uh, oh, please do excuse my red eye. It is a spring season, and I, although I am a spring baby, I absolutely don't do well during spring because of the allergens that are in the air and all sorts of other things. Anyway, or oh, remember that none of my videos constitute as financial advice. If you're looking for financial advice, please do consult a financial advisor, certified one, right? So last week I was going to do a talk at a corporate event. It was a Women's Day event because it was August, obviously. And um, I wanted to do something around women taking charge of their finances because I always find that as women, sometimes we lack behind when it comes to financial management. Not that we're not good with finances, but we tend to do that, you know, hide away type of thing from our finances. And it always catches us in a bad time or in a bad state or we wake up a little bit late when it comes to our finances. Anyway, so as I was going through some of the research, Research, I found a story, a very interesting story, um, about the way women historically had, have been treated when it comes to finances by even their parents, right? So the story is about twins, it's a boy and a girl, and they are about to turn 16. So on their 16th birthday, their dad presents them with gifts. So the, 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 on the table, there are two gifts. So one is a big box, and it's, you know, it's pretty fied. It's in, uh, covered in pink uh, a wrapping paper and it looks absolutely amazing and then on the other side is just a brown envelope waiting with the boy's name and the girl's name is on the pink box big box so obviously because they're kids and when they're twins they probably make fun of each other the girl's probably making fun of the boy saying oh you just got an envelope i've got a whole big box so she rips apart her box and in the box she finds mittens an apron baking trays utensils recipe books so she's just like okay this is quite exciting i mean i'm 16 i could have loved a car but obviously the family can't afford two cars for two kids that's what happens when you get twins anyway so she's quite excited because ugh, i mean a gift is a gift what do you do especially when you don't come from a very well-off family it's all right right and then the boy quite reluctantly to open the envelope because he's just like okay what's really what could fit in in an envelope in a brown envelope this doesn't even feel like they put any effort he then takes out a piece of paper on on the piece of paper it says a share certificate and he's like dad what is this and the dad says carry on reading so he reads the entire paper and realizes that his dad has bought him a portfolio of shares in one company right and he gets excited because he's like oh my goodness i own my own shares and the dad is like yeah my son i've got you an asset now i've started you off well and the girl asks, okay, so why didn't I get a share certificate? And that is like, no, but I bought you what you need as a woman. And for me, that was an, a, an, a serious, serious problem. But what I wanted to take away from the story was the lesson. And the lesson was, let me tell you what's happening. So this is what the lesson that I took away from the whole story. So my little sister, let me give you a bit of background. I've got a little sister who's turning 19 on the 7th of September. So um, she's like the darling of the family. Why? Because she's like 11 years after me. I'm the second born and she's the third born. And because of health reasons, my parents kind of delayed um, conceiving her and having her. So she, we love her. She's like so the cutest kid that we've got in the family. Well, obviously my other little sister is also cute. But uh, Violet is like a special kid you know she's always smiling she's always laughing so we love it a bit and she's really good at manipulating us so one of the birthday gifts that she really wants to get is she wants to go on this trip with her friend and they want to go to a spring fiesta party in another city in south africa and she's broken down all the finances. She's given me the accommodation cost, the flight cost, what it's going to cost for them to go around in the city, how much the tickets of the party are going to cost, and all sorts of, you know, financial breakdowns, money breakdowns of this entire trip. And the amount is not really a big amount. So I'm like, okay, chilled. You know what? This is something that I can definitely consider. This morning when I woke up, I was just like, mm -mm, no. Actually, what she doesn't know that is coming her way is that this trip is not going to happen. And I know I sound like a terrible sister, but let me tell you why I'm doing this. And let me tell you what I'm going to get her instead. I'm deciding that I'm getting her a tax-free account for her birthday and a portfolio of shares of all the things that she actually uses every single day. And number one, one of the things that she uses is her cell phone. Her cell phone, it comes from a listed company. Number two, the network provider that she is using is a listed company. 
So I'm going to buy her shares from those two companies because I just feel like if I do this, then in the next couple of years, she, when she is ready, she can cash out her tax-free accounts if she wants to. She can cash out her shares if she wants to. And she can go to all the parties in the world that she actually really wants to go to on her own account, on her own pocket, on her own budget. But also, the one thing that is really going to help me with is what I call black tax. Because at the beginning of this of last year, when she was starting first year last year, there was a whole mix up in Jay in our family about who's gonna pay for this, who's gonna pay for that, who's gonna pay for accommodation, who's gonna do that, who's gonna do that. Because my dad has two older children, three as a matter of fact. So it made sense that we, as her older siblings, should pick up on paying for her school and all those things. But because we didn't financially plan for it well, it felt like a little bit of black tax. So now I am starting to work this black tax right now because she's not the only sibling that I've got up. But in that it comes after me, there's another one who is now 16. So my plan is I'm going to buy them shares for their birthdays coming up. And when the little one who's 16 gets to first year, I'm going to cash out her shares and I'm going to pay for her education like that. And Uvalete now, when she actually starts working and gets her first job, instead of her getting uh, a credit to buy certain things, I'm going to make sure that she is covered in terms of cashing out her shares and buying all these other things. And I've actually decided that from her pocket money that I give her every single month and the pocket money my dad gives her every single month, we're going to take 20% of that and put it into her shares portfolio. Because sometimes it's not because people don't want to invest in shares. They just need someone to start them off so that they get used to it. I always say it's the same as when you get like 80% in an exam. It's so nice. The praise that you get from people is so great that in the next exam, you kind of like want to get the same thing because like the praise is so great. So that's what I'm going to be doing for my little sister. So if you do bump into into the street in the streets, because I know she doesn't watch my videos, please do tell her oh, goody, uh, uh, that trip is not going to happen, baby girl. You are getting a tax-free account.